Um, Monty Graph, Monty for ten dollars. Uh, thanks, Monty. Monty, like I said, I can you know you should really talk to your attorney before you make comments of public. I only say that because I'm not saying you're right or wrong, but your attorney should really know if you're making statements out there. Okay. I don't think this is really necessarily a bad one. I'm just, like I said, just want you to know that. Uh, but thank you for the super chat. Um, I mean, to be fair, like this could be considered like, well, you donated money to me now. So like, does that make me biased is the other thing I would say is a thing there. Um, I filed a defamation claim in Colorado against Jake, Morphonios and the Colorado, I know that's not how you pronounce his name, but I suck at the Greek ones. And the court deemed Colorado was the wrong jurisdiction. They too recommended I file in Jake State. And and I understand you have prior experience where you they've told you this is the wrong venue, this is not the right, correct place to go. And I, I think that's, you know, an understandable argument. So I don't know, like, I, that's an argument you can make there. So I don't blame you for doing what you did. Like I said, you have the right to do what you did. You have the right to go straight to Minnesota. I just think, you know, like I said, and the judge said, like, my experience when I used to do this all the time, we always filed where the plaintiff was. Um, and also, hold on. So, Monty, I guess what I was trying to say is the stuff with your case, it's not that anybody's right or wrong. It's just is this the best fit is more or less what's being argued. So I understand, given what you're dealing with in your past, why you would do this now. Fair enough. You haven't done anything wrong. It's just, is this the proper fit? Um, Rowan Coward for $5 saying, happy ATF agent, deceased ATF agent day. Well, that should be like every day. That should be every day. Mr. Sniper, $50, says the Michelle Traconis verdict is in. Guys, we're going to flip over to that because we've been uh, doing this for like 27 days, covering her trial. Uh, it was a pretty interesting one about like, it, it's a very circumstantial conspiracy to commit murder case. I don't think they've got enough to convict her, but it's not. it didn't look good for her throughout the trial. And then D-Zone D for six euros, saying, Josh is in the chat. Could you get him on to do a post-hearing discussion? Well, I plan to have Josh on. I'm going to reach out. I, I I need to reach out to him a moment and ask him if he'd like to come on, set up a time, because there's this that went on. Josh has got his own issues going on. You know, Russell Greer's kicking around. He's got a lot of stuff that went on with just epic, everything he wants to do there. Alex Ale, Alejandro Caraballo, as he's known. And, you know, with the eternal Liz Fong Jones. Elliot, as he's more properly known by. I call him Elliot because he is. Josh wants on now. Where did I miss that? Because I am. I was trying to read the chats. Do you really want on, Josh? Hit me up on signal. Cause I'll. If you want me on, I can call in. Just give me a minute. You are muted. Okay. All right. Hold on. How do I send this to you? Shit. How did I do this before? Okay. Hold on. Uh, no, I'm going to send it to you through the farms if you want to come on for a second. And guys, we'll do Traconis right after this. Uh, you know, because Null does have his experience in war in legal, his legal experiences. He can talk as a very veteran member of the legal world. Um, show all. Start conversation. A way to go away. Sapience. There. Oh, put in a title. There. I sent it to you, Null, if you'd like to join. it's I just messaged you. Um, if you guys are watching the Tracunas trial yet, hold off, because I don't, don't watch it yet. We'll watch the verdict together. So, well, I was trying to read everybody send super chats. I felt they needed, they deserve to be read first, so... Um, hold on one second. Um, it's oh, they think it's just a question for Draconis. All right, well then we're not going to go back for a question. That's not worth the time yet. 
um, Jim wants on. That's hilarious. Uh, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to, uh, if you guys are not familiar, this is Joshua Moon, also known as Null, the proprietor of Kiwi Farms, among many other entities. How are you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, so, and I, I, I didn't. I, it's, it. I meant it truly. You have a lot of experience of uh, a lot at, at at the legal world at this point in time in your, you know, your story career. I'm sure you didn't expect that when you started all this. Um, yeah, there's um, there's like an expression like serial litigant. Is how you describe someone who sues people yes. constantly. I'm a serial defendant. I think yeah. is the is a new category of person that I fall into. I th I think so. I think that's very true. You're you're very much a uh, yeah. You're you're. There's a brand Constantly. new guy threatening to sue me, pro se. I don't even want to mention him because I think he's out for attention. But as oh, a, yeah, well. I can't out of nowhere because <laughs> I don't want to get into it. But it's like I'll, I'll talk to you about it. I'll talk to you about it later. Yeah. That way you don't have to. Um, so you listen to it. Um, what did you think so far? Okay, for um, I well, I thought that Monty's attorney. He didn't sound very opposing, which I know is like a superficial thing, but yeah. I think that matters a lot to people. Sure. Uh, he kind of he kind of had like a mush mouth, which I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say ever, but um, it was definitely I don't know. They, they grilled him really hard, and the one thing that they they the guy on the the first panelist, the guy on the left, he asked him a question that was like, "Why should I be in Minnesota instead of Colorado? Doesn't it sound like forum shopping?" And you would yeah. hope that when you're at, going to the appellate court, I think this is the appellate court, right? To, to, to do oral arguments that you would have a canned oh. response for that because that's like the question <laughs> like yeah. that's the question that you're answering um and he kind of like froze in in response to that question like whoa that's bad because that should be you know you should that should be like the the, the question you're prepared to answer in total um and then yes. Randazza gets on, and he literally just, like, he walks up, he hits the dab, and then everyone claps for him. <laughs> That's it. There's well, no... I mean, there's something to be said about having that experience. And Randa okay, okay, guys, you guys are saying that Ethan, both Ethan and Ralph and Jim went on. Okay. That would be hilarious. Uh, but no, it's, well, I don't know how I get a hold of them, really, at this point anyway. Um, that's funny. But no, I think for Randaza, he shows up in places... You know, this is this is not abnormal for him. He shows up, he's out of town, talent. You know, he comes in and you know has to knock it down. So he's very comfortable in his own skin. And he's obviously older than the other guy. And that doing this a million times makes you better at it, just being there, being in that situation. And I I think they were not prepared. And ultimately I think they were a little unprepared for the court being as receptive to the forum shopping argument. I don't think they were anticipating that to be as uh, – because they're even saying, like, well, do you think we got it right? Like, the, the Supreme Court of Colorado got this right. Yeah. And instead of just saying, well, it's – a lot of times they'd say, well, hey, it's our law. That's what we're, we're bound by. But I, I think they were – they they think there's something to be said there about is this a forum shopping issue. Now, whether or not they decide on that, they were very interested in talking about it, and I don't think they were ready for that as in-depth as it happened. Yeah, maybe not. Um, yeah, yeah, like I was, I was, I was kind of. My, my main gripe was just that he didn't have an answer for the, the uh, why should it be in Minnesota? Because I was under the assumption, mm -hmm. and I was shocked that he didn't bring this up, that you can always sue somebody in their state if they commit a crime on the internet or a tort on the internet, mm -hmm. and you can always sue them in their state. That's what I, because I, I for yeah. for various reasons, I've had pretty complicated discussions regarding jurisdiction recently and um that mm -hmm. that's obviously one of your main considerations because i'm a floridian living mm -hmm. uh place unknown <laughs> i have businesses in wyoming and every other state in the 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 u.s and then you know the the <laughs> defendants are in two other states that i have no conduct in so it's like well where do you sue yeah. and i i had been informed that you can always sue in the state where the the tort originated so I, why it's a question that he can't sue in minnesota that kind of eludes me to begin with well he, ultimately he can he can and the, the the one judge pointed out he said i do federal court all the you know he's like i was a federal court practitioner we he said you could i could do what you're doing but he said almost all the time we filed where the plaintiff lives and if especially if that was where the tort occurred as well 
so for Monty, you know, he was in Colorado, and I know Monty's saying that he lives in Illinois right now, and I'm not getting into that. But wherever it is he wanted to live at, or was living at, is where typically you file the action. It's always easier. You take advantage of that. So, like, for example, like Russell Greer. Like, why he filed in Utah versus Nevada makes no sense to me, because he lives in Nevada. Why not he was file living, there? It, That case has been going on for so long. I'm yeah. pretty sure that he was living in Utah when it oh, happened. Oh, he was at the time? Yeah. Oh. The same, and same as El Monte, I think, now lives in Illinois, but he wasn't living in Colorado at the time. Which, yeah. to me, I mean, it's like, that should have been his go-to. Why, why file in Minnesota? Uh, plaintiff plaintiff is transient. He lives in a different state than Colorado mm -hmm. now. So if you remanded this back to Colorado, that wouldn't make any sense because he doesn't live there anymore. Yeah. Uh, his well, is an online presence. He does yeah. all this stuff online. He, you know, that's his business. So it, it doesn't make it makes yeah. more sense to sue where you know the the defendant's going to be than where the plaintiff yeah. is. Yeah, and and I and I and I don't disagree with that. But a lot of times, though, you file where, and yes, that's true. But I also think the court's saying, but yes, you could. They, they they obviously were attuned to the idea that Minnesota's state law applications are far more favorable to Monty than, you know, even Colorado or I don't know what Illinois are, but I'm sure they Illinois, Illinois, if you're French, if you'd like to call it that, um, that's that, that's something they're at least noticing now, whether yeah. or not they. I mean, I'm sure it was forum shopping, like, to be yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it, but like I told Monty, it's an issue of. It's not wrong. It's a question of what's right or wrong. It's just a question of is this the right fit? Is this the best way to do it? Um, yeah. When I took when getting ready for the bar, there was this multiple choice part of it, and they would have questions, and you'd look at two answers, and they're both really good, but they'd say you have to pick the more correct answer. And I always hated that shit because if they're both right, they should work. But when it comes to the conflicts of law issue, in this case, one of it's not an issue of one's right or wrong. One of them is a little more correct than the other, and it's an issue of is it Minnesota? Is it Colorado? So well, they my both work. My question is, if they're going to send this back to district mm -hmm. court, they're sending it back to Minnesota district court to apply Colorado anti slap Yes. That's insane. That, that happens. Should be, that, should, that should be your defense. That's insane. Well, Why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> well, I mean, well, Josh, like you and I can enter a contract and we could say the forum of choice is Texas and we'll be arguing Rhode Island law. You could do that. It's utterly insane to do that, but you can agree to have that maybe be a term. You know, th there's there's all kinds of ways you can agree to the choice of laws, the form of laws, the proper form to try a case in. So that's entirely it's yeah. dumb, but you can do it. And yeah, that's, that's that is dumb because you're just you're just complicating matters for absolutely everybody involved. Not a single person is spared misery in that case. Well, there's there's always reasons for it, though. I, I've seen that happen once or twice in stuff I've run across. There was a reason for it, and once the reason was explained to me, made some sense, but I still thought it was dumb as hell. And in this situation, even if Nick wins here, he could still lose because the court could say, okay, well, I'm going to apply it, and nope, it's still defamation, I think, per se, has been met. Go on a discovery. Oh, that would be the funniest outcome. The funny I always root for the funniest outcome. The funniest outcome mm -hmm. is that he spends all this money on this appeal mm -hmm. asking novel questions of law to try and alley-oop some kind of weird precedent for Colorado mm -hmm. law being applied in Minnesota, and then succeeds, and then it's applied, and the judge is still like, well, this is still defamation. <laughs> yes. No, it, 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 it can it – can, th that's the thing. Like, it, It's not a guarantee because even in Colorado – oh, you say well, – you don't just – it doesn't – you know, people think you get to go anti-slap and you drop the mic and that's it. You can still lose even with the protections provided by an anti-slap statute. It, it's just um, very scary because if you lose an yeah. anti-slap, then you owe fees. And that's unique. That's what, that's the reason yes. why Vic Mignogna owes half a million dollars now. It's because he lost yes. against anti-slap, which is – it exists basically to, to scare people into not filing unless they – you know, unless it's like a surefire victory, basically. Or yeah, where they've got the money they're willing to lose. So, <laughs> and 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 you know, that's that's also the option there. But yeah, the other big part of anti slap is generally they're pretty robust and you can get away with a lot of things, but it's not bulletproof. 
it depends on the state. I don't know. I'm not familiar with Colorado's, mm -hmm. but for instance, I am familiar a little bit with Massachusetts and Massachusetts has an anti slap law, but it's so weak. It basically doesn't exist. Um, mm -hmm. And the same is with Virginia. Virginia has anti slap, but mm -hmm. Virginia's anti slap is so weak that it, it effectively does not exist. Um, ah. So there are anti slap. Texas is an, like an outlier. Like they, I think even. Um, because I had Harden look into this. The the Texas, because I, I asked him what how what what really fucked up that case. So he looked into it for me, just out of his own personal curiosity, mm -hmm. uh, his educational purposes, and he came to the conclusion that the Texas law was actually insane, and they changed it specifically mm -hmm. because of this case. Like they made it less severe than it is oh. was when Vic filed. Hmm. Well, I mean, on the plus side, it served a public policy purpose. <laughs> <I> mean... <laughs> how charitable. <laughs> I mean, that's sometimes that's, you know, it's, it's the, it's like the epilogue, like, sure, you may have lost, but they changed history forever. Oh, I, um, my work, someone asked in chat, no, I don't pay him for random questions. Um, cause he has, he has an interest in, in intellectual curiosity and in the random things I ask him. So he does not, he, he is merciful and does not bill me for the random bullshit I, I grill him with. That's, that's really nice of him. It is. It is. A, lot, um, a lot of attorneys won't. Yeah, no, it's true. It's um, it's it's a godsend having him around because he is uh, I wouldn't say ideologically aligned, but he is like, he finds everything about my predicament fascinating and amusing. So he, he um, he enjoys it. <laughs> so he doesn't he doesn't tend to bill me for things he doesn't have to. Okay. Um. Walter Malone for 199 is ask as a question for you. What makes a proper lol cow? A proper lol cow does not learn from his mistakes. That is the core defining feature. The person will walk into a rake over and over again. Um, added bonus, if people try to help them and they continually throw them off and say, no, I will step on this rake. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. Yeah. And then uh, Wendy Carter for 15, uh, I don't know what that is, is saying, Jim promises years ago if he ever ends up at court, he will be fully clad in a Nintendo Labo suit. Perhaps the time has come. He'll be in a bubble. He'll be like in a well, hamster wheel all the time. Well, that's what yeah. I... I don't know if you heard me. I, he, he'd come rolling in a court in his wheelchair with like a t-shirt gun full of hats and just start pelting the crowd with them. <laughs> <laughs> the judge jumping up to grab a, a Medicare hat from the camera. Everybody would. It'd be great. Yeah, uh, I was making a joke about how the, the driveway battle will take place in the courtroom. The bailiff will have to arrest like 100 people for for conduct because they just break out into a brawl. Yes. The entire the oh. bleacher, the, like the entire audience is just packed with like internet weirdos. Oh, yeah, it just turns it's an IBS reunion. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it'd be so good. It'd be so good. Um, Always with the hamsters. Yeah, yeah. Just like Richard Gere, always with the hamsters. No. No nefarious hamsters, hamster purposes. Yes. Yes. Well, Demon's Rat says, no, Stalker Child, is you who's stepping on the rakes. Did you, uh, so I made a, I made a joke about how, um, cause I was, I, I set them on unclean hands. And I'm like, the only thing that Montegraff really did to Rakeda prior to what he said mm -hmm. is that he was like Photoshopping him into the sweaty squad sausage memes. Do you remember yeah. those? I remember did, those. Did those enter into a court document? I don't. Not so yet. They did. Oh, I don't recall seeing that. Well, I think they may have been referenced. Oh, okay. I don't think I, they, no, I I don't went, think they I were like exhibit A. Filings to include, okay. yeah, exhibit A, the sweaty scars. This is not defamation yeah. because, uh, Your Honor, exhibit A, the sweaty. S s s yeah. I can't even say it. it's like an alliteration. The sweaty sausage squad yes. meme. I mean, here's a yeah. picture of my my defendant photoshopped into an egghead, and he's holding up a, a sausage that he grilled. Yes, yeah, and like I said, I I'm going to try to avoid stepping into that arena too much. But yeah, I don't think there was there was just a there were there were references to it in the filings. I don't think it was an actual filing. With it, well, I mean, I mean uh, what what surprises me is that a lot of people in chat seem to not understand what Rakeda said. Mm -hmm. Can I mention that? Can I mention what Ricky you, said? You can say, like I said, I won't comment on it just because I'm okay. involved in it. But yeah, you could say whatever it is you want to say. Okay. So um, I think that a lot of people are under a 
serious misunderstanding that back in the day, Montagraf had a couple trolls because he's always been like a weirdo, right? So people uh, fucked with him. He put, self-published a bunch of homemade vi videos. Um, and then some trolls on the internet said that these were snuff films, even though they're obviously just like home movies. Um, and that's, uh, and I think one of the characters in his films is like a minor that is like a runaway from home. So it was like, oh, this is a snuff film and this is supposed to be a child, even though it's clearly an adult woman. So this is shallow pornography is what they said. Um, so people kind of misunderstand so that because Ricada reiterated that he was, or said that he was a pedophile, that these rumors are the originating claim. And therefore you can't, you, you can say that uh, he's a pedophile all day long. Uh, that's not true because what Ricada said is actually completely different than the original rumor. Ricada went out and said that Montagraph always liked sucking little baby penis, which is not related to his movies. It was not an existing claim. It was literally something that he came up with on the top of his head to uh, make fun of Monty on the live cast while Monty was in the chat. Uh, so, and then when when asked about this, hey, he no, liked real my, quick. Yes. Hey. Apparently, Ethan, apparently Ralph really is in chat. Do you? Uh... I don't think that that's actually Ralph. Uh, well, some go somebody. On. Well, no one of one of my people that is telling me it's him. I don't think it is because he would he would tweet about it or something. Oh, I well, I don't know. I thought well, is he is he not tweeting? Because oh, here, let me look. I'll let you keep going. I'm gonna look but, real yeah. quick. Finish my thought because yeah, he sorry. lied to my face about this, and he said it was a um a statement that could not possibly be defamation because. He said probably, which I guess is like a weasel word. You can say it probably is a pedophile, and therefore that's not defamation. But he didn't. He said the exact opposite. He said literally the exact opposite of, of probably. Um, so he knows that what he said was stupid, and he deliberately lies and misleads people about what he said because he knows that that's defamation per se. And he knows that he doesn't have – and when he retells the story, because now he says, well, I have to – uh, say that he is a pedophile um, because he sued me. That is the only logical thing for me to do is to say that he's a pedophile. Um, but, but he never reiterates his actual original claim because he knows it's it's bad and he knows he can't defend it. I'm not lying. That's literally what happened. Actually, he, he, I've never heard him reiterate the original thing that he says. He... Um, he will say that Montagraph is a pedophile, but he'll never actually, word for word, repeat his original claim that is actually the question, the legal question. It's probably not defamation. Yeah. What could you, I'm, yeah. if you, if saying that someone's like gives oral sex to babies, what could you, is not defamation? What could possibly be defamation then? Like, what can you say about somebody that's not defamation if that's not defamation? I, I don't know, Nolan. Like I said, I, I don't want to... I know you're probably asking more hypothetically, but it's like, yeah, yeah it's a, that's a very good question. Very like, good ask question. yourself, if that's not defamation, yeah. like, what is? And if someone said that about you, what would, how would you feel? If someone said that to you, so it went online, someone with... At the time, Ricardo was at his height, so this is a person who was speaking to 100,000 people at a time, said that you sucked off babies... How would you feel? <laughs> would you feel that your reputation was damaged because of this? Or would you say, well, First Amendment, bro. No, I probably wouldn't. You'd probably be upset. Yeah. And then uh, also Parallax has a question for you. Um, sorry to switch gears and all, but he asked this, and I don't want to forget it. Are you proud Boss Man seems to be thriving a little bit? Oh, I'm, I'm very happy. He even that pays he, his mods. That's, that's he awesome. He pays his mods. Um, I'm very happy that Boss Man's... Um, <laughs> Has with all the I was I told I told the guy that told me about him because Bossman had less than a thousand subscribers when I knew him mm -hmm. and um, or found out about him and half of those subscribers were just people fucking with him and making bot accounts, um, which Stake <laughs> eventually fixed. But thousands of his followers are fake subs that are um, controlled by a group of people that that I mm -hmm. had talked to that, um, but not anymore because they, they they hired a service. So all of his subscribers now are like real accounts. But back when I first found out about him, the majority of his accounts were bot accounts. Mm. Um, but I I was I told him when he told me all this, if I talk about this guy on stream, I can tell you right now he's going to blow up because it's very, very, very funny. And it's very funny to the point where you can take a random clip of Bossman and show it to anybody in the world and they will laugh at this guy. 
because it's it's just like you don't need context, you don't need his background, you don't need any information about him. You see him throw money on a, a casino game and lose, and go, "What the fuck? How is that possible?" And you just laugh because <laughs> because like obviously that's a, it's a casino game. That's what that's actually what it's designed to do is to take your money. Um, but yeah, I'm very very happy that he has not like changed at all with his publicity. He seems completely like willingly ignorant to the following that's accruing around him. And he just sees the sub count go up and he thinks, thank God, more gambling money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, yes. And then, uh, wow, there's, you guys are just chugging along out here tonight. And what else is there? Um, D Zone D is saying, but how would Monogar prove damages? If it's per se, damages are presumed. When you, you know, for example, if you're being accusing somebody of criminal conduct, there's a presumption you're dam- you've, you've caused damage to them, you've caused them harm. Because How it's do they a serious thing the amount that crime. you have to pay. Because I know that defamation per se is a thing, and people seem confused yeah. that, like, when it's such an egregious claim, mm-hmm. like, I think there's a couple things, like, you committed a crime such as yeah. raping a child, and you have HIV. Mm-hmm. Those are, like, the two things that are defamation per se. Yeah, um, and they just uh, assume damages. I'm not sure how they do that. Well, you, well, the da- well, you well, you assume damages, but you have to quantify the damages still. So, does that make sense? Like, there's there's you you you've already met the burden of you caused harm, mm-hmm. but then you have to quantify the harm. So, does that does that make sense with that? Yeah. So, so now it, you have to prove you have. To, so it's it's not it's kind of like if you got in a car accident. It's like we we presume you got hurt. We presume you have a broken leg. But just now, what's the cost of that broken leg, pain and suffering, punitive Are damages? Are part whatever? of that, if it's per se? Uh, I think per se, I, it depends on the state. I mean, fees could be part of it. Attorney's fees could be part of it under statute yep. or under case law. It's a typical thing. But I think they'd have to ask for it. And I think they asked for it in their motion or their complaint anyway. So, I, you know, they covered that base. But I mean, so you, even if it's you like one dollar, it's like well, but that's it's like embarrassing. <laughs> well, what that police officer case that's cited in the stuff, they talk about that. There was defamation per se, but the guy only got like seven hundred bucks. Yeah, because it was a, and that's a, it's not the one dollar nominal damage, but it's also, well, if seven hundred dollars is all you're getting, the jury didn't think it was that big a deal. So that's where they determine you've suffered harm. So we don't need to find you've suffered harm anymore. But we, you have to show how much harm you've suffered. Yeah. Because um, otherwise makes, the jury doesn't know what to do. If you don't tell them how much. I think part of the relief is just having the court say that this is like defamation. You know, it just winning is in, in part part of the relief. Oh, yeah. And well, no, that's where the nominal damages come in. The, well, they say you're right, but this is ridiculous. You know, yeah. that that's the, uh, you know, I, I, as my professor once said, that when you get the nominal damages, it's saying like, you're right, but why the fuck are you here? Uh, verdict. Is what they that's their way of saying it. Um, yeah, and KRS Monty for him, when, winning one dollar might be enough, winning a million dollars might be enough. I don't know. I a don't million know. Million dollars. Oh no, don't wish him well, a million dollars. You know what that means. Yeah, I, I forget my, my apologies out there. Yes, I don't want to wish ill on anyone. I wish Monty $999,999. Well, I mean, you were wished a million suicides, though, so. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we're 238 for $5 saying, how is it that Nick said different from what Nola said about Dick and Vito on live stream? Mm, okay, so I can back this up. I have said before that um, you should not call someone a pedophile unless you have evidence for it. You should not call someone a pedophile because pedophiles deserve to be killed. If you call someone a pedophile, you should be so convinced of this that you would be willing to take a gun and shoot them and sleep soundly afterwards. Um, I am completely and totally convinced that Vito Giswaldi is a pedophile, and I believe that if it were up to me, if Joe Biden convicted him of pedophilia and said, Josh, you're the only guy for the job. We need you to take the um, this Colt 45 and kill him. You're the only person I can think of that that can carry out this sentence as as found in a court of law. I would say, Mr. President... It would be my distinct honor and privilege to execute the functions of state and in Vito Giswaldi's life because I do believe truly that he's a pedophile. And I believe this uh, because he said that he is a pedophile multiple times repeatedly in different contexts. I, I just say yes, Vito has a long history of saying, I'm not joking, I really will do this. And it's. Yeah, as far as Dick, I don't know if I've directly called Dick a pedophile, but I think that mm-hmm. like it's it, it's very suspicious, like the shit that he's up to, like his interests, just his his visceral 
bizarre repeated interest in like getting involved in pedophile like shit and controversy it's like why why do you do this it, it, i don't I, I don't know if i've ever said like but he skews me out like real bad yeah and then uh oh this is an old one fatty caddy for five dollars saying would you choose josh or nick if you had to pick someone to give legal advice but not be a lawyer um i i i i'd probably ask my dad instead <laughs> i'll go i'll go option three Is your dad Let's, a lawyer? No, he's not a lawyer. That's why I said I'd ask him. Oh, it can't be a lawyer. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that, that's why I would ask my dad. No, I'm like the first lawyer in my family. It's like, if I don't know what this all entails, I'm like, I'm not sure I would have done all this. Being a lawyer. It's like, it's a lot different than I expected. I imagine it's very boring. Like, you in your head, you know that movie where Santa Claus gets put on trial in New York City? Mm -hmm. And there's like the big, like a third of that movie is just the courtroom scene where it's like silly and they bring in reindeer into the court and stuff. Yeah. Imagine that prospecting lawyers, imagine that courts like that, but then it's mostly just like filing bullshit. And then you yeah. have like one day, one hour to give oral arguments and then you're back to filing yeah. bullshit for another year. Um, Kind of like that. I mean, I, you know, you watch shows like Franklin and Bash and I'm like, if, if, if it was one, one thousandth as cool as anything they've ever done or any of those shows. I'm like, this would be a really, this would be like the best job ever. And overall it's not too bad, but yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of drudgery, but every once in a while you get to do something cool and you're like, Oh my God, that was neat. Like I had a case where, uh, I got to argue recently. It was a, this lady got accused of, uh, taking a swing at her mother-in-law. And I got to argue First Amendment grounds for it, that it was like fighting words and she was provoked to fight. And it was cool. I got to do, like, I call it doing Clarence Darrow stuff, like really making a real argument for once, not just like, oh, well, you know, maybe she deserved it. But, you know, she's protected <laughs> and she was provoked. And this is not something in society we could tolerate. And the judge was like, yeah, I'm not buying that. So <laughs> but I, it was fun. I got to do that. I got to write these briefs and it was you know, setting the first amendment in a, like, it was fun. It was, that, that was the neat part. I feel like being a lawyer would only be fun if you're already financially independent. So you can take on whatever bullshit you want to. And, and oh, well, yeah, that part of it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. But if you, if you have to like hustle and grind and like put up your billboards, like were you charged with DUI? Call us first. Yeah. Like that, that part of it is probably not very fun. Especially when you have like, absolute like crackheads like walk into your office and like try to talk to you about the how they've been like arrested for possession of child pornography mm -hmm. and you're like oh fuck <laughs> no there is <laughs> i don't want to deal with you yes yes wondering where you're and I, I know people are gonna laugh but wondering you're wondering where the next meal comes from is always yeah it's like a shark okay you ate but now you're like okay what am i eating next what am i eating next yeah there's that part's not fun but i will say i've you know it, it's I've learned more about running a business doing this lawyer stuff than I have you know, anything else I've done in my life. So also Alyssa's here. How are you doing, Alyssa? I thought Alyssa got banned. No, Alyssa she's back. To, she's back. I picked her up and threw her in the bin. <laughs> Bam. No, she came back pretty quick. I'm not sure what happened there. I think they realized whatever it was, wasn't uh harassment. I always wonder if Ricardo does stuff like that or just like his fans, because he he does still have fans, and they let me know in the comments of my archives of all my podcasts <laughs> that they still are still out there. They still got uh, his back. Okay. Also, guys, I did the uh, the the tallies <laughs> over. What you see? Paul? No, just the, you just like I must have had a lot of cases. <laughs> yeah, that's that's no, I know no. that's what I say. That going from what I said really fast <laughs> just made me laugh. <laughs> Oh well, yeah. Somebody's saying you must. Sean must be eating a lot. Well, not cases, sadly. Oh, you got distracted. Okay, I got you. You got distracted. By yeah. That. <laughs> so, um, when I said, "What will the court do as far as the uh, poll options go?" One one thousand six hundred votes. Thanks, guys, for participating. Death by melon, six percent. In favor of Monty, seventeen percent. In favor of Nick, thirty-one percent. And the court may order death by Baldo, forty-four percent. Yeah, I'm the waiting for winner. the part where Randazza like puts on the baldo as like a demonstration in the court to explain what it is. <laughs> you have to pay him a lot for that. That's going to really increase the fees of the court. That that would be great. That would be great. He uh, <laughs> courtroom demonstrations like so. How does this work? 
<laughs> oh, sorry, I'm just I'm still thinking of Rain Dazzle putting on the ball though. Yes, court. <laughs> yes and, and and the and the judge will be like, uh, counsel, can you please step in front of the jury so they get a better look of how this works, sir? Now proceed. And like anything you demonstrate in front of a jury, your experiments you perform in court, you're supposed to be able to perform them beforehand to make sure it's performed right. So there's going to be a lot of dress rehearsals. So Mark will have oh, to yeah, use the ball several times, times to make sure you can pull it off. <laughs> right. You don't, because the last thing you want to do is you want to stand in front of the jury and then put it on and then like the rubber band snaps and like crushes your yes. balls. Like <laughs> that's your entire yes. case out the window. <laughs> yep. Or, or, or the guy you picked up at the truck stop to use like starts vomiting everywhere. It's like, no, no, no. We get that out of your system. You got to give them Epicat before you put them on stand. Yeah. Uh, oh, somebody's asking. Um, Break contact too is saying um, for five dollars. Will I be? Will you be hiring me in the Total Retard War Fund? I don't think you have any oh. problems in Ohio. So uh, if I if I have any problems in Ohio, I know who to turn to because um, there's a fun thing called it, it, even at like a bare minimum. There's a a fun thing that apparently wasn't used very often a couple of years ago, but now is everywhere. It's Prohoc Vice, I think is how you pronounce it. Yes. And um, yes. that's basically like if I have an attorney, because the law is basically the same kind of everywhere, except maybe Texas. Texas is probably very mm -hmm. different. <laughs> but um, if you need your attorney to represent you in a state that he's not licensed in, you ask another attorney to babysit your filings, and that's called Pro Hoc Vice. So if I need to file something mm -hmm. in Ohio, I can, I can ask Sean to um, yeah. babysit my attorney. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Yeah, if like Harden had to come out here, sure, I'd, I'd show him around. Be all right. It's not a new thing. I'm just saying that apparently it wasn't used very often before the internet, and now during the internet era, lawyers well, go. Yeah, go but everywhere. that's because mainly things were limited to where you were. People weren't really. You know, all this would be all this would be nonsense. You, you didn't really go outside your like the town or county where you live for the most part. So. Yeah, it was like a novelty the internet. to see it, but apparently not. It, that's this is how it was explained to me that it was a novelty once upon a time, and now it's everywhere. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's very, it's very true. It's very true. That's the case. Um, yeah, I mean, like you want to see the corn get harvested? <laughs> I'll show you some corn getting harvested. Is there anything in Ohio? I'm trying to think. Is Cincinnati first... in Ohio? Yes. God, they filmed the first 48 there. Oh yeah. <laughs> and if you, you want to go be on the first 48, you, <laughs> you can go to Ohio. <laughs> oh, I remember years ago I was down in I was down in uh Cincinnati and it was my first wife, her friends, we were down there and I made a joke. I'm like, this looks like they filmed the first 48 around like in this neighborhood. And she's like, No, they were like two blocks down a couple of months ago. And I was like, Jeez. <laughs> I was like, Great. But yeah, there there's 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 not too much here. There's not too much here. I'll admit that, but that's the great part about it. Nobody ever wants to come here. Like you see those maps of everybody leaving California. Guess where those? Guess where that line doesn't go? Ohio. Oh, it just no, but it goes to fucking Idaho and Montana and Wyoming and Texas instead. It yes, ruins everything. Yes, and that's fine. I mean, stay no, away from Ohio. Fine. It's full. It's stay fine. away from Ohio. It's full. Nobody we likes need, it. Here. We need to call a constitutional convention and repeal whatever the fuck it is in the constitution that allows interstate. Um, travel without without like borders we need to get rid of that we need to deport the all the full faith and credit clause yeah yeah we need to get rid of that we need to deport all the californians oh no it, it, that would be very good and i feel bad for people in texas and idaho especially idaho it's really bad there like everything is so expensive um buffalo dan called he wants his baldo back mandy why do you have a baldo that's the question Okay, I need to go eat. Um, is there any any last questions? No, I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you for stopping by. I no problem. Guys, once Anytime. again, Null from the farms. See you, Josh. Oh, um, just one more uh, thing. I, yeah. I am, I'm filing something in this week. I think is probably going to be public. Mm. Um, and it, it'll be it'll be fun because I don't I don't know. It usually doesn't happen. This kind of filing. I, I don't know if that's a, a hint or not, but. It's very mm. rare, and it almost never goes through, but it's it's fun to do. Oh, I I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you I mean, son of a bitch, you did it. 
Yeah, it's I'm I'm even requesting a copy of it uh, sent to me because I want it as like a, a token. Put it on your wall, like no. Yeah. Oh, great! No, this will then we're then I'm really gonna have some stuff to review coming up. That'll be great. All right, thank you very much. All right, see you, see you, Josh. Bye. All right, guys, that was fun. This is all again. Anybody else shows up, we'll have like a star-studded cast today. So I have an idea what that is, but I won't say till I see it. Um, so yeah, guys, that's it. Uh, let's see here. Michelle, Tr I gotta double check Michelle Traconis though. Did anything happen there? Um, uh, no, Michelle Traconis is still in deliberations. No verdict yet. So, so there's no update there, guys. Nothing's happened. Hannah Reed is going. She's the armor in charge of the gun that Alec Baldwin used to shoot that Ukrainian lady, which got Alec Baldwin unofficial status in Wagner PMC. So we're going to switch over to that in a second. Um, when is, uh, when am I going to do a hot tub stream? Never, never. Uh, Jester says, wondering how the Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal's going. I don't know. They were still finishing up showing her uh, interview with the police where she basically fucking tells them everything. So once again, do not talk to the cops. Please do not talk to the cops. Um, please don't talk to the cops. Uh, Mal35 says, coming in very late. Is it over or on lunch? No, it's over. Uh, it's probably been over for about a while. Holy shit. Okay, I guess we're not done yet. Um, our first time appearance. I'd like to invite on Ethan Ralph. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Going pretty Let good. Me, uh, I'm trying. No, here we go. Sorry, I had to kill the audio. I was listening to the stream there. Uh, I guess Noel got word that I was about to jump on. He seemed to he seemed to skedaddle pretty quickly. Oh. Uh, I don't know how he got word, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, how's it going? Um, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I, I do appreciate that you considered me PPP's grandpa and not PPP to be my grandpa. That I, I, I do appreciate that because that would have been worse. Oh, you saw that. Yeah, yes. I mean, you're pretty hefty. You know, I lost a bunch of weight, uh, yeah. so I get to talk a little shit now. No, you can. You're looking good, man. I'm glad to see you're doing good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. By the way, that was not actually me uh, in the chat. I saw them pop, I, I, and then I, they thought that was me. Uh, no, it wasn't actually me. But that's why I got sent the link. So whoever oh. was trolling, uh, oh. thank you uh, for that, I suppose. But uh, okay. no, that wasn't actually me in the chat. It sounded like me at certain points, though. I was. <laughs> it was a decent uh, impression, but no, I, my account's like Bob Smith or some shit like that. Uh, oh. I forget what it is. Um, you know, you just had Noel on here, mm -hmm. and he said... Uh, he doesn't like people being accused of being a pedophile without any evidence. Well, then he goes on to call Vito a pedophile and said, you know, he wouldn't mind shooting him, basically. Uh, then he intimates that Dick Masterson is a pedophile right after that, which is just low down and dirty. Sean, I don't know. Uh, you didn't really challenge him on that. But, uh, I, you know, I haven't seen any evidence that either one of those guys are pedophiles. Well, Have I mean, you? I'll all I can say is Vito's made the tweets, but I know Vito said those are jokes, but that's where, you know, if you run around saying you like doing something and then you say, oh, well, I'm joking. I mean, that's up for people to decide whether or not that's true. Well, he did make some from, questionable tweets. I agree with you there. I don't um, think I've seen anything from Dick Masterson, but that's, you know, I don't know. I I was never involved in the whole world that, you know, the sector and any of that stuff back in the day. So. I don't know what Noel fully knows, but I, you know, from the veto stuff, I could say, yeah, veto. It's like, those are, if you were yeah, ever, but, if he was ever in court, those would be some, uh, those are some ones he'd have to pull his collar on if he had to answer. But for Dick, yeah, I, there's nothing I've ever seen that says Dick is, I mean, other than the cuties thing, but that's, that alone isn't enough for me. Well, so those tweets, and again, I wouldn't have made those tweets. Uh, you know, I I do think that they were done to basically joke and troll back. People were already calling him a pedophile then. Uh, and so he sure. leaned into it and was like, yeah, you know, whatever. I, I don't remember the exact tweets, but I remember yeah. seeing them. I remember seeing him doing it, and I was like, no, don't do that. 
because of the use against you forever, uh, even if you're fucking around, which I believe that he was. Yeah. But they'll be used against him forever. So I w they were ill-advised, uh, I think. By the way, he's going to be on my show tonight, so I'll talk to him about it too. But, uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, but I don't know that Vito – and I I don't – I mean, I do know. And Dick Masterson, they've never set up a – you know, a board for pedophiles to commiserate on, like Josh Moon, your your past guest, just, uh, you know, that's in his career history. Sean, I don't know if you know yeah. that or not. I, I, I'm i aware of those. I'm aware of those comments. Yeah. And I, I, no, I mean, he actually did that. That's not a, mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, it's, I mean, I got, it, as far as what has been said with that, yeah, I, I was never, I wasn't around for those parts. So, yeah, it's, it's, I think that you can make those arguments one way or another, but I don't believe them based on what I know and what I've talked about with Null. Um, I mean, he actually did that. Now, I, no, that doesn't make him a pedophile necessarily. You could say he was a free speech absolutist or whatever. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have done that either, set up mm -hmm. a place for pedophiles sure. to commiserate. Uh, but anyway, go ahead. I didn't mean to well, cut you Well, on. no, no. I mean, that's the thing, though. I mean, it's one thing if you, know, if you want to make the argument of all that, and I understand you can make that argument and you want to, but... I disagree with any of that, that he wanted that to happen or that was his intended results or whatever you want to argue with that. But I well, do agree with you. I do agree with you as far as Vito has said, yeah, he was trying to lean into it, but that's where you get into the idea of like, is that the thing you really want to lean, lean into? It's kind of like if, for example, if somebody starts calling me a racist, like you're right, I'm a racist. And you start screaming every, you know, racial slur you want to, is that the way you should probably address that matter? No. No, it's not, and I agree with that. Uh, and I, you know, I saw it when it was happening, and I was thinking, Vito, no, don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. But I also took it as a troll, right? He's trolling sure, back, sure. and it's not like, I to me, that's not evidence. Uh, like setting up a, you know, room, not a room, but a message board for pedophiles mm -hmm. to commiserate, and it was the stated goal, Sean. I mean, they were segregated off. They they wanted to quarantine them off from the main discussion boards and give them their own. Uh, place basically so they wouldn't contaminate uh the main parts of what was it 16 chan i think are you talking about one of the chans because that's what yeah. i'm trying to figure out where yeah you're I am. About. yeah okay I am. yeah 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 it wasn't kiwi farms it was i think it was no, a project I, simultaneous with that or something i don't know i'm not a chan yeah, expert and, and i and i wasn't following i don't know enough to know the answer to that question to really comment on it because i didn't really follow it at that point but I've heard I've heard those comments before. I think I've heard you make that statement before. So yeah, it's it's out there. Yeah, um, I mean it happened. I, I don't even think uh, Noel would deny it outright because that did happen. Uh, now he's hmm. probably got some excuses, but uh, I mean that that did happen. That's not a that's not a claim. I mean mm -hmm. it's there's evidence of it. You know, and screenshots of him talking about it on the board and and all that stuff. So it, it did occur. Hmm. All right. Well, I like I said, I don't. Know but if you don't, to... yeah, you don't have to comment on it if you don't yeah. want. No, I know, well, I know. But I'll let you say. I'll let you say what you want to say there. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, no. But uh, did you? So I know you know what this all we were on today about is Nick and Monty. You know, Monty sued Nick. Uh, you know about that whole thing, right? Yeah, I know a little bit about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I don't know what it. I did see what he exactly said, but it's mm -hmm. been uh, I don't know. It's been a while. Months, a year since I've seen yeah. it, but yeah. I do know that he's involved in legal battle with monograph. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you have any, do you have any thoughts on that yourself? I mean, certainly you could free to talk about that if you want. Well, you know, the case itself, I don't know. I'm not a big mm -hmm. fan of, of suing people over what mm -hmm. they said online. I've gotten tied up in court and people have tried to silence me. There's certain things I can't talk about even now uh, because of that. Well, and yeah, so, you've got your own, I understand. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it hits a little close to home uh, for me. Uh, and, you know, people use the courts to muzzle you and then they do an end around and spread a bunch of lies about you and you can't really respond to it effectively. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really a big fan of that, but I, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of of the case or or anything. I, I damages, I don't know. To me, that would seem. Did that really hurt Montagraph? I don't know. Um, do you think it did? Right? Like I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I don't think so. But 
Yeah. Well, well I I try to avoid talking about the actual thing itself because Monty, when he put together his lawsuit, he named me in the actual like opening of it. So I'm oh. like I'm technically like a witness, so I try to avoid that because this whole thing today was about like the rules. They had an argument over what rules they were going to play by. So it was like what rules apply, the rules of Colorado or the rules of Minnesota, and I could talk about that all day long because it doesn't matter to the case. Like either way, they're going to play by a set of rules, and then what happened what i what happened what i saw what i think or felt doesn't matter at that point and then eventually at some point if they want to talk to me or if i get deposed or whatever i want to be able to be fair to both sides and not have been running my mouth one way or another for this thing it's kind of yeah i mean that makes sense and i the way you were i I didn't see all of the stream earlier but Mm -hmm. the way you were talking i figured you were mentioned uh in the lawsuit uh Mm -hmm. in some way or some manner might be called Mm -hmm. to the stand so yeah and you're a lawyer so you know more about than i do but i figured you're trying to keep your powder dry a little bit uh, just a little bit on some of the stuff yeah that makes sense but i did want to ask you and i talked about it on my show what's up with the with the violent turn against ricada uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like a violent turn, but I just, I think a lot of people, I know Nick has said everything's great with him, but, you know, I, I it doesn't look like it to me, and I know other people feel that way. Um, I know whatever he's got going on in his life, you know, is his issues, and everybody's got their own problems, you know, God bless, I hope everybody gets their shit worked out, whether it's me, whether it's you. You know, Nick, I want everybody to get their shit worked out. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know a lot of people ain't saying that to you, but yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Um, but I don't know. It just seems, it, and maybe I overstated it, but it seemed like he kind of made your your career here on the line at least. Uh, and mm-hmm. you know, I saw the Metal Gear Solid clip the other day. I've seen yeah. some of your recent commentary, uh, and it seems to have taken a a really nasty turn against well, him. I guess I'll say it like this: I never meant it to be nasty, and certainly if it if Nick were to tell me, hey, man, I feel like those, you know, because I made some before and Nick's like, some of this is fucking hilarious. And he's texting me before about that. If he were to say right now, this is way too much, dude, you're really, do- I feel like you're dogging me now, not just poking. You know, I'd say, I'd apologize to him and I'd stop. I'd stop. And, you know, I realized, yeah, with the whole Metal Gear Solid thing, yeah, I kind of went far with that one. But I, I, I really want what's best for him. But I think there's also times if somebody does something goofy or they're, you know, if they're stepping on a rake, I think it's okay to laugh at them, to, to argue I can't laugh at that person. I don't ever want to be in that position where you say you can't make fun of that person if they do something goofy or cringe. But for Nick's situation, I, I think those are issues. But I think really I the whole thing he did where the, the John guy, I don't know if you heard that. Did you see that? I wonder, you yeah, know, and I was glad you – go ahead and bring up your points on that because yeah. I got a few as well. Go ahead. Yeah, like, and I, and I get the idea that, okay, this guy may have been fucking with him, so he's going to fuck back, and I get that. Fine. If somebody comes at you and they're giving you shit, clap back at well, You saw what I said business. then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. 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 You, you, I, I have no problem with you doing that. I have no problem coming at somebody like that. They come at you, you come right back. And, yeah, I know, Chad. You're going to joke about the way I said that. Fine. But I think there's something to be said, especially in, you know, for Nick and I, you know, the idea you go to somebody and you speak to them in confidence. Okay. But I also feel there's a little bit more of confidence in that, that type of a matter, I think should be protected a little bit more. And I also argue you are an attorney and and, and Nick's an attorney. I'm, As I of now, really... like if you were to go look at Nick, it's like, was that guy going to take anything? If I talk to him about anything, would he keep that in confidence? Because if he gets mad at me, he could go out there and run his mouth where I wouldn't do that because I, I try to keep, I want to show people like, yes, what you tell me, I take, to, you know, until you tell me I could say it never will never get said again to another single soul. You know, even you, if you came to me and you mess, you, you DM me later, hey, I got to talk to you about something, I question. And you came to me and told me all kinds of shit until you tell me I could talk about it or it has to come out through the course of something. I'm not telling a soul about it. And even if that's just a consultation, whatever it is, I take that to the grave. Like, and I take it, there's all kinds of secrets and shit I've gotten. I've been doing this 10 years that I will never tell another soul until I get permission. So I think that's critical. And for him to do that, I think is very much 
I think, I think at this point, basically, he's. I mean, if you Google this guy, you're like, I want to hire this guy as an attorney. You're like, fuck. If he gets mad at me and gets a couple in him, he's going to tell everybody about all my business. I, I, I just, he's got to get right with himself. And I don't know, I don't know what that is. I don't know what he needs to do, but I think he's got to get his shit sorted out a little bit. So I take that and I understand what you're saying there, but yeah. what would you say if I told you that John slash Captain Manning mm -hmm. had revealed that on Kiwi Farms, I don't know, mm -hmm. two years ago almost, and that I read it and already mm -hmm. knew that story and that Kiwi Farms had read it as well. And that's how they were able to deduce who John I was. I saw that part. Yeah. No, I saw that. I saw that. And I saw that there. And I think part of that is, yes, this was already something people knew about. But I don't think a lot of people know about that. I think there's also the issue of it might be out there, but I don't know if that's your place to really bring that up like that. If that person wasn't, you know, then again, though, if you were in crisis, why would you share with the world that you were in crisis like that? That's a separate matter of people liking to overshare or people liking to share to share to get, you know, to get noticed or power leveling and all that. I just don't think that's proper for someone who wants to be. You know, holding stuff out in the position they're in, I don't think it's a proper way to do it. If you want to go after him for saying he's a you know loser, lives by himself, you can make all kinds of allegations. You know, being a broke deadbeat on Social Security and all that, you can make all that crap you want to. Without also saying they're sitting there crying about trying to kill themselves and how that all worked out, because not all of it was fully disclosed, and I think that that what Nick did was expanded upon it much more than what was in that post. Cause I've seen that post since then. And Nick oh, talked about it. a lot more. Yeah. yeah and and yeah. that's why, okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. He didn't breach too much confidence, but what he did breach was quite a bit. I mean, there, there's more to that than what captain Manning wrote out, which, you know, there's that, I mean, and I yeah, but it wasn't quite how it was portrayed is all I'm saying, right? Like it wasn't a full reveal. I it guess he did expound upon it. So I'm, you're right there. But like the guy was already talking about it. The guy posting his thread like 20 mm -hmm. times a day and going back to, you know, stress on Rakata and maybe he's not himself. And again, I won't comment on that. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I, 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 but I will say this, you know, having thousands of people, I'm experienced with this, having thousands of people after you every single day, Making up lies, and maybe there's some truth mixed in there too, right? There usually is. Yeah. But you know, there's this machine against you every single day, just cranking it out. And his threads are even wilder. You know, the thread they have on him is even wilder than what they have on me. Oh, uh, I right? know. It's growing ten pages every day. Twenty pages a day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I, I would argue that that could put some stress on your life as well. Oh, right. I, um. Oh, I. I. Uh, that's the thing. I can't only imagine. I mean, especially even for you, every day. Yeah, my pantsu, my Morris, my Vickers, like, you know, they like you hear about it every day, like your fucking truck and the cartels and you, you hear about every fucking day. And like, you know, like, yeah, I, I yeah, I can only imagine how that feels. And I like you hear about it all the time. So, no, I, I don't doubt that gets to you after a while. And that that's that is the shitty part about it. And even when you're just trying to do your own stream, it's not like, you, can, you know, you shut off the Internet, and ignore it. Well. Like if you well, and you Nick, can't get like, away from it. Well, if you shut up the internet your... though, yeah, this is your yeah. this is this is your thing. So it's not like you can. Well, you know, I don't know. You you could probably become like the governor of a uh, your, <laughs> your, your your state down here. Yeah, yeah I think you could. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. you said it right. I mean, there's no ex escaping it. And even when you don't want to talk about it, and again, you mentioned some stuff. I'll be clear. I'm not talking about any of that stuff, and I haven't talked about any of that. I want to say on the sure, record. Sure. Uh, and I haven't mentioned anybody's name in that regard, et cetera. But, I'm sorry, um, hold, on, hold on, Ralph. Let me apologize. I apologize sure. for that, Ralph. Yeah, he has not said anything. I was just using those examples of what people bring right. up that they try to drive home every day. And fuck with me. You know, right. whether they feel right, wrong, or indifferent, they're using it to get at you. Right. And, and, and I'll say that it goes back to what I said earlier. There's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. I legally can't talk about. And it's unfortunate when, you know, everybody else can talk about it, including, you know, people close to the situation and mm -hmm. it's given credibility when it's not credible, some things being said, et cetera. And I can't actually refute it. I can't really, um, you know, go, go on the record without getting in trouble. Uh, and so it's not like that for Rakeda, as far as I know, on most of this stuff, but it is like a, you know, 
every time you get dragged into it and i've seen him doing his regular stream saw him doing his regular stream the other day and you know it's all these comments non-stop about his family uh, about oh you drink too much this and that and he's just trying to go through an article i think it was about the supreme court or something right uh and there's no escaping it uh, every single day i mean you could see how that would be a problem right and it's been going on for almost a year now i guess with him she hasn't muted sorry no i and i understand that for nick and that's where i i think though i think nick has really been able to and i'm not trying to knock you ralph or make fun of you here but i think nick was in a position where he really could kind of control how things were going and i think he just i don't know what his deal is and i I get, I get it. You know, I think probably for Nick a little bit of it. Certainly, I'm this way at times. You tend to like when something happens, and you know, I, I've been a very big contrarian most of my life. That that's just how I roll. I'm not afraid. Like I, you know, do whatever, and I do the other fucking thing just to fuck with people. And I, I get that. And I think for Nick, that might be part of the issue here. Is you know, we'll fuck all these people. I'm not. I'm not going to do what they want or whatever they say just because they're saying it. But I, I feel like Nick was in such a – he's been in such a position where he could direct things in a way. And, I, and I'll and i say for you what's happened to you as an example of, well, I've already seen what's happened before. So I can – I have some idea on how I could navigate one way works versus another way not working and how do I react and respond to things. And I just feel like Nick has kind of been like, oh, fuck it. And just done whatever went on his own path, which I don't I don't see why. I feel like there's enough examples on the internet you can say, like, okay, well, I should probably I can weave between these weave between the landmines a little bit. And I don't think he did that. Well, you know, you mentioned me and speaking from experience, there is a point where you can control things. Um, but you know, you're taking fire every single day. You know, mm -hmm. people are coming at you with bullshit every single day. And you know, it's hard not to respond uh, to that stuff. And I, I know sometimes you shouldn't or you should take a different path or a different response. But once the snowball, you know, starts rolling downhill, you know, things are out of your out of your hands. Um, I mean, what could he come out and say now besides he was going to hang himself or something that would please some of these people? I mean, it's a ra it's rabid against him. And I've talked about this. You know, I don't really know. It seems out of proportion. You know, I <laughs> with me, I would say there's more stuff going on for people to mm -hmm. to seize on or whatever or make a big deal. But I see Ricada and they say, oh, there was some fake bitch in his chat or, mm -hmm. you know, stuff about yes, that's the that highlight of know. comparatively speaking. Right. Yes. Or he's drinking too much or whatever. It's, and I'm thinking, what? Why are they so, you know hell bent on destroying this guy I now have a couple theories uh you know a lot of his fan base was built around kiwi farms and then once he had a falling out with null and you know null starts talking about him weekly or whatever multiple times per week on his show that you know the kiwi farmers see that as a green light and mm -hmm. see think they've been betrayed uh etc and that seems to be what's behind a lot of the bloodlust because I see, you know, it, I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem like there's as much there, there to justify the response that they've given him. Well, I, I get what you're saying. Yes. Compared to like the, the crap you've dealt with, you know, this, you're like, I wish it was just that bad. Probably. Right. I was, I'm sitting there saying, wow, I wish I could trade places. Yeah. Are you yeah. serious? I'll uh, deal with Mandy I mean, every day. Yeah. I was yeah. About to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mandy, that doesn't mean he wants to talk to you. Don't start DMing him. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, it seems here. minor. Uh, I appreciate that. It seems minor in comparison to to me and some others, right? And I, and I yeah. see stuff I'm going and, through. And, 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 going and through. it is minor relatively compared to what a lot of people are dealing with. But for Nick, where he, you know, where he was starting out at before all this happened, this is a pretty big deal overall. So, I mean, I I think it's. <sighs> I, I guess I, I think people had the wrong impression uh, as well. Now, maybe you could argue that that he gave them that impression or what have you, but I never I never took Nick Ricada as 
you know, a minister or, or something like that. Right. And of course I've mm -hmm. met him several times. I never was under that impression, um, that he, you know, I knew he had a good family and, and all this stuff, but you know, I, I never, I don't know. It seems like people feel like they were had or something or they were well, a lot snuckered. of people do feel that way. And that's, but that's where, you know, I think that comes down to like, well, what did they, what did they reasonably expect and what were they reasonably given to rely on? And I think that's where people are still trying to work through that. But a lot of people feel like they were, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. If, you know, were people really, or did people re read into him? Did they just want to see that, right? Yeah. Like, I, did they read into him all this and they did, they foist all this upon him. And you know, if there's people we like, we like to see the good in them. We like to see ourselves in them. Or was there some of it? Nick was also, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm working with it too. I, I think there's a little bit both ways there, but you know, obviously people are going to say that they feel like that they got had and Nick's going to say, well, I didn't do anything. I did nothing more than, you know, I'm the same person as I've always been. And I, you know, that's where people I think are going to make their decisions. And I think, you know, people are made their decision right now. Okay. So I'll ask you two questions. First off, mm -hmm. um, what did you think of him? Did you see him that way? And then second off, if you were giving him advice, you know, yeah. we're here talking about it. What would you tell him to do? I mean, ultimately I've, I saw him the way he came across to me was not necessarily like the trad dad thing, but yeah, he was kind of close to that. He was in that vein and was very much like for where he is compared to now is like 180 degrees to me. So like what I would tell Nick is I'd say, you know, you can go back to, you know, I get, you know, right now he's saying, I don't want to go back to what I was doing. I didn't like any of that stuff or whatever. Okay, fine. But what you're doing now isn't working. What you've been doing for lately hasn't really been working. You know, I, I know you want to sit there and talk about relationships, but nobody wants to talk about that stuff. I mean, there's some people who can talk about those things. I don't think people like that packaging from you. That's like me. If I wanted to go talk about another subject, nobody might give a shit about it. Well, but that's something I really want to do. Well, that's, you know, that nobody's going to want to listen to me. Um, I, I think he needs to just, I think he just needs to take a moment and like figure out what he really wants to do. I know he kind of goes back and forth, but take a day or two off and just figure out like, what is it you really want to do? How do you want to get there? Because I feel like he's doing a lot of reacting and going back and forth. Okay. Well, in trying to jump to both sides and, you know, like, okay, well, now we're doing law stuff. And then, you know, he wants to go back to what it is he wants to do. And I, that's my biggest thing for him is I just think he needs to take a deep breath and figure out what he wants. Because what he's doing right now, this going back and forth, is clearly not what he wants. And that's going to be more destructive to him than going one way or another, I think. Because if you're trying to do both things, it's not going to, it's going to get worse. And I just want him to stop and take a breath for a second and figure out what he wants to do and just go do it. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of a, especially when you do streams all the time, multiple mm -hmm. times per week, um, you know, it it can get to where you want to talk about some things that interest you sometimes or whatever that may not mm -hmm. interest your your core people. Uh, and you have to balance that out with, you know, why people came there in the first place. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's something I've had to think about from time to time. Or I want to talk about, sometimes I'll talk about sports. Uh, and, you know, mm -hmm. the majority of my people don't want to hear me <laughs> talk yeah. about sports. So if I turned it into, uh, you know, the kill stream into a sports recap show, uh, that probably wouldn't work. Uh, so mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying there. But. I don't know. It just seems like the bloodlust is so high and I have it too. Um, that, you know, a lot of people just want to see him fall and I, I don't really know. Well, how that's you just get some of that back. Um, but that's a lot of people in general though. People like to see people fall. I mean, that's just, I think that's kind of human nature to an extent. So. Yeah, fair. It's, um, it's, I mean, it, it's not just, it's not just people rooting against you. It's not just people rooting against Nick. I mean, just in general, he loves, I mean, in, in society in general, we like seeing people get taken down a peg. That's true. I think people like a good uh, redemption comeback story, too, well, as that well, too. though. Uh, yeah, and there's, so, there's, there's always a way Not back. that he needs redemption, but, you know, that's the term, redemption arc or whatever. Yeah, comeback story. Uh, yeah, and um, I don't know. I just, I just feel like he's been treated uh, a little unfairly in regards to – I mean, it just seems out of proportion, uh, like I said earlier, with yeah. – 
what he's actually accused of doing or whatever. Sure. Um, so that's kind of my whole problem with it. And I saw you jumping on him. I didn't, I, I don't know. It just seemed a, a little strange. Do you think you're still cool with him or have you talked I, to him or, I mean, I I've, I've reached out. To, I, I mean, when I, there's times where I've said like, Hey, is this okay? Like, Hey, just so you know, you know, I, I, I'm like, the jokes are kind of like, just happen. Like, you know, it's, and he said, yeah, it's, it's, it's all good. I mean, it's been a little, like he said, you know, what he's been going through lately, like the past like week or so, you know, I reached out to him, like, is there anything I can do? What do you need? Anything like that? And he hasn't said anything, but also I know he's been very radio silent about it anyway. So I don't, I don't know as of late. So. Well, like I said, that whatever happens it is, I'm too. hoping it's getting worked out. Well, that happens too. I mean, you silo yourself off when it's mm -hmm. one of these things going on, which really, you know, I, everybody handles it differently but that i've handled it that way too and it's not really the way um to do it if i had one just minor critique of of it because once you silo yourself off you know other people aren't hearing you and and other broadcasts and seeing you everywhere and just mm -hmm. the negative messages out there yeah. uh, and you can't really refute it uh, just even me being here i uh, saw some people shocked uh that i that i showed yeah. up right uh yeah. and there's a reason for that because i haven't been doing many outside appearances ever you know well not ever but not very much right unless it's a friendly field uh, mm -hmm. i haven't done too many you, in the last you came, couple years and i'll say you came on to here and you didn't know how i was gonna do this so no no i didn't yeah. and you know i said some pretty mean things so yeah i didn't know uh, oh, how you would do this? Uh, no, I was people have said to me on the internet. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. Well, sometimes people take these promos, or I'm talking like oh. I talk shit about legal mindset, well, and shit. then I saw video after video about that, and I'm thinking, man, you know, I was just talking shit. <laughs> like no. I don't even know this guy. Yeah. Um, but some people were like, Rob's on the warpath, and he's <laughs> going after this guy. And, I mean, I guess I technically did, but it was just me, you know, cutting a promo on my show. I. Yeah, didn't go after him, quote unquote, and no. start pulling up his record or his job history and critique. You know, getting personal like that. I was just sure. talking shit about the guy. So yeah, well, like I'm, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, no, that's that's true, Ralph. But hey, anyway, it's uh, thank you for I having me gotta, on. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Gotta, I gotta go do my show yeah, anyway. Yeah, Killstream going, shit. guys. Killstream yeah. dot live. Oh. There you go. I want to say this. Yeah, it's yeah. over on Rumble, Killstream. If you search it, Killstream Live is the channel, I believe, or it just says Killstream, mm -hmm. one of those. Um, but uh, I'll say this. I, I saw you shout out uh, Alyssa Clips earlier, and people falsely blame me for that as well. I had absolutely mm -hmm. nothing to do with that, and I know it was me in the video. It was me talking shit about legal mindset, actually, now that we mention yeah. it. I didn't do shit on the video, didn't flag it, mm -hmm. didn't do anything to it. I'm happy to see – she said she got let out of jail early back, uh, yeah. on Twitter. Uh, I'm happy to see that. I use her channel often on my show. Now, I'm usually making a different point than what she's trying yes. to make in the clip that she posted, right? Yeah, um, I've seen – I've seen – yeah. full stream, so. Right, yeah, but it – you know, I use that channel a lot. Uh, and so, I no, I would absolutely not do that and haven't done that. And I'm glad to see uh, that she's back. So I just wanted to state that as well. And I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Well, no, thanks for – Thank you for coming on, Ralph. I appreciate it, man. I'll see you around. You're welcome. Right. Take you care, around, man. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> well, <laughs> when I woke up this morning, I wasn't planning on that. So, uh, Ethan Ralph, everybody, uh, on the kill stream over on Rumble, kill stream. Uh, yeah, he's going to be over there. You're going to be firing. Oh, shit. I think he's, yeah, 140. Yeah, he's due at about to start right now. So, should be starting any time. Yeah. Well, next, guys, you can't believe who we got next now sitting down in the queue. No, there's nobody else, guys. We're done. I demand more guests. I got things I got to do, guys, today. Whew. Yeah, pull Jim out of my magic lawyer hat now. Yeah, hold on. I got to go take a hat and put it in the middle of a pentagram and light it on fire and summon him. Five star days, baby. You know, God. You know, when things like this happen, I'm like, I hope this isn't my peak. You're know, like, this is cool. So, Alec Baldwin's up next. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, Jim wants on. Yeah, Jim always wants on. Um, 
Okay, guys. Yeah, and I... Uh, RS Legacy is saying for $5, does the Fifth Amendment really apply to teachers since they're two agents of the state? I mean, yes, but they can also discipline you still. I mean, the Fourth Amendment applies to school administrators because they are the government. Um, F. Gusto is saying, sect assist is we and good today. I think we all are. Um, Pepsi Man, I understand you saying hi to Ralph. Yes, I mean, being too poor to pay for child support. Ralph, why are you defending Ricada for free when you're poor? Uh, Wendy Carter saying, uh, no more child support for Harry Morris. Total Ralph a male victory. I also don't want the little, it shows like a little squiggly things. I don't know what those are for the currency symbol. Uh, D Zone for six euros is saying, remember when Ralph called Nick a shyster thief and insulted his kids? Or when Ralph claimed Ricada stole the GoFundMe? Gunton does it apparently. Yeah. And you know what, guys? You know, I, I honestly like Ralph seemed like he came on to talk and didn't want to fight. Like, you know, if somebody wants to talk, I'll talk to him. Um, Dr. Doomer for five euros saying, Congratulations for making it to the top of the sector, Sean. Maybe Worski will remember your name now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, tell Wong to stop crying and take your child support. Okay. Tridio saying, Did you take your wife to a cuck resort? I don't think there's any of those. In, well, there, I don't think there's any of those in Mexico, at least where he's at. So, no, the answer would be no. Um, you're not a wrestler, Ralph. You don't cut promos. Well, he cuts, I don't know, like intro or something. I'm not sure what he is. Yeah. Sean was going to do the Ralph voice, but stopped. No. Say, Griffith saying, was that fat boy Ethan Ralph? <laughs> I'm fatter than he is, so. By far. Because I've seen his tweet. I've seen his tweets. I know I'm fatter than he is. Where's Worski? Worski's probably doing whatever Worski does during the day. What's my ethnic background? Uh, white. Uh, oh, that's the Israeli. Is that that is the Israeli shekel symbol? Oh, is it? He's really shekel symbol. Oh, it is. Damn. Is he's really shekel symbol. I'm sorry. I didn't realize what my... I'm not, I'm not used to my handlers paying me in the company script. They usually pay me in dollars. So... Oh, no. I've said too much. Doggo wants on. Monty wants on. Oh... I wear my fat with dignity. Not really too much. Oh. Mama JF wants on. They get good Wi Fi down in a grave, an unmarked graves. Okay. Taking that Zionist money. I know. Hey, you know, the shekels, those silver coins shingle along with everything else in my pocket. Yes, yes, I know we got to shut it down. You better remember who pays your bills. I'm like, well, Wendy, why are you using your real name? You're not doing a good job at OPSEC here. I thought that was like just your Mossad name. I guess it's your real name. Jim said, my work here is done. I'll make JLP tomorrow. I'll make J Jesse Peterson up here. Let's do it. Let's make a week. Um, V and Sargon want to check Applebee's. Hey, I'd like to have Sargon on. I think he'd think I'm a lunatic, but I got to talk to Sargon once when, when I was on Nick's stream for his, like, birthday a couple years ago. That was fun. Like a paid in gold fillings, yes. Johnny says we need a Ouija board. Jim, get in here now, Jim! No, we're all done. We're wrapping up, guys. Yeah, I'll do the Putin-Zelensky debate next. 
I'll just be hoping I can get Zelensky's coordinates so their caliber can find him. That wasn't a, well, I was laughing about it because that would be hilarious, but I, that was kind of not really a joke. Um, you, I need a hoe to go dig through the potato patch. Yeah. Oh. See, see, yeah, Coach Red Pill went in on the seance. But how's the Ouija board going to go? It'll go to Coach Red Pill, tell us what you're thinking. It'll go to Y, and then I'll go to A. It'll be yeah. It'll just sit on the A for like 20 minutes going, yeah. Is that how you do it when you seance? You're like, oh, great spirit, summon us. Um, instead, you're like, Coach Red Pill, the prophet of Wilshire. We summon you. Yeah. Oh. If Nick really wanted on, he's got my... He has my info, so... Funny. Nice try. Mandy wants on. That's not happening. So, guys, that's really it. Um... Yeah, thank you for everybody being here. Uh, I appreciate... Uh, yeah, if you guys are on Rumble, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know if Rumble's chat's working. It's not showing anybody there. And then everybody... Uh, the three people on Twitch. Thank you. You guys are true and honest fans. The three people on Twitch and the... <laughs> over over 1.1600 of you here on YouTube. Thank you, guys. Um... Yeah, we're all done. So, yeah, it's a very keno day. Oh, who's who's texting me right now? Um. So, yeah. Well, actually, I think it's a pretty good victory for Ralph. I think it went pretty well. So, God bless the goal. Yeah, that was a pretty good guest. That was a pretty good guess. I'd have Ralph on again. Definitely. If you have me on, I'd go fuck around the kill stream. Sure, why not? Anyways, guys, that's it for today. We got to get over to the Hannah Reed trial. That's going on right now. Um, Trout once on. No, we're not. Oh, so, guys, I will see you guys around tonight. We will be, uh, shit, what are we going to do tonight? I don't know. We're going to figure out. We're probably just going to go through Hannah Reed and get started on that. And I will see you guys around. So give me a couple minutes. We'll get started on Hannah Reed. Thank you again, everybody. Um, Traconis, it's in jury deliberations. There's nothing to talk about. So, oh, yeah, they're closing arguments. Yeah, we'll work on those. We got to get those out. So I should let Ralph host. Yeah. Um, so that's it, guys. In the meantime, take care and thanks for being here. We'll see you guys. Bye.